Hello and welcome to another episode of Mad Mondays with Patrick and Celeste, where our Mondays are so mad that we have to broadcast on Thursdays. Now unfortunately Celeste is unable to be with us for the next couple of weeks, so I'll be broadcasting by myself, bringing you the weekly wrap up of the most important and most interesting sporting news. So this week's been a pretty big week in sport and we'll start with tennis. So Rafael Nadal and Serena Williams have taken out the men's and women's French Open singles titles. Nadal won the men's title for record eighth time, defeating fellow Spaniard and world number four David Ferrer, who was playing in his first ever Grand Slam at the ripe old age of 31. So he defeated him 6-3, 6-2, 6-3. So Nadal now moved to joint third place with Aussie Roy Emerson on the all-time list of Grand Slam winners with 12. So that's, he's been in some good form over his career. His French Open record is now 59 wins and one loss. And Nadal has been in some pretty good form of late since coming since returning from a seven-month break from tennis due to a knee injury. Williams defeated Russia's world number two, Maria Sharapova, in straight sets, 6-4, 6-4. This takes Williams' Grand Slam title tally to 16, 16 Grand Slam wins, so which and it's also her second at Roland Garros. So she's now won every Grand Slam title at least twice with uh, winning the Aussie Open five times, the French Open twice, Wimbledon five times, and the US Open four times. All attention now turns to Wimbledon, which begins on the 24th of June. Warm-up events have already begun, with four Aussies competing in the Agen Championships of the Queen's Club in London. Hewitt, who's won the, fourth, uh, who's won the event four times, is through to the third round after defeating 10th seed Grigor Dimitrov, 6-4, 6-3. Marinko Matasevic is also through to the third round after defeating Frenchman Michael Loydra due to a washout. Unfortunately, fellow Aussies Bernard Tomic and Samuel Groth were both knocked out in three setters in the first round. So unfortunately for Bernard Tomic, his, his bad form continues. And it was interesting to see his father was also at the, at the event in Queens, surprisingly enough. So we're not, sh- not sure what's going on there, but apparently he was allowed access to the court. So... Don't know whether he'll be able to. He'll be granted access for the Wimbledon though. So we wish uh, Matt Matasevic and Hewitt all the best of luck for Queens, and hopefully Hewitt can grab his fifth title over there in Queens. Okay, so moving on to cricket, and also the ICC Champions Trophy is underway in England, with Australia delicately poised in their pool after their match against New Zealand last night was washed out. Australia posted a competitive 8 for 243, with Adam Voges top scoring with 71 from 77 balls. George Bailey, who's the captain in Michael Clarke's absence, absence is fif- made 55 off 91 balls. And Glenn Maxwell made a, a 29 off 22, a really quick fire there at the end of the innings to get the Aussies up to where they were. So they were the leading run scorers for the Aussies. New Zealand, in reply, were 2 for 51 from 15 overs before rain stopped play. Quick Clint McKay had both of those wickets. So unfortunately, Australia dropped their first match to England on Saturday night our time to, yeah, to England by 48 runs. England batted first, making 6 for 269, and Australia struggled through their innings to finish at 9 for 221. But unfortunately, Australia's ICC Champions Trophy campaign has been marred by some some indiscretion by opening batsman David Warner. So he's in trouble again, this time for a drunken altercation with an English player following their game on the weekend. Warner was dropped from last night's fixture against the Kiwis after he punched young English batsman Joe Root after a few drinks in a, in a get-together after their game on the weekend. So Warner may may miss the rest of the Champions Trophy and will have to face another Cricket in Australia investigation, his second second in three weeks, uh, after he was fined $5,750 for an explicit Twitter rant a couple of weeks ago. As I said before, Michael Clarke is is out injured at the moment with a back problem and he is facing a race against the clock to be fit, ready for the Ashes. He's currently in London seeking a specialist treatment for his troublesome back and he's hoping to be back in time for the first test against the Poms on July 10th. But he's, and he's hoping to be back for some of the, a Champions Trophy, but he looks in doubt to play the Champions Trophy and even in doubt for the Ashes. But So fingers crossed Clark he can come back and sort of strengthen up that middle order a little bit for the Aussies. Now moving on to some, some good news, the Socceroos are a step closer to qualifying for their third successive World Cup with a 4-0 defeat of Jordan at Etihad Stadium on Tuesday night. 
Mark Bresciano, Tim Cahill, Robbie Cruz and Lucas Neal were the four goal scorers for the Socceroos. New and Lucas, Captain Lucas Nils was his first in his 91st match for Australia. So congratulations to him. That's, that's 91 matches is a long time to go without kicking a goal. But I guess as a defender, you probably don't get down there as much. And the Socceroos now need to defeat Iraq at ANZ Stadium in Sydney next Tuesday to guarantee qualification for the World Cup in Brazil. So fingers crossed they can get a win up there. So if, if you're in Sydney, get around the Socceroos and uh, hope, get down there and support them. So hopefully they can get a win and make it through to their third successive World Cup. Now, motorsport. Mark Webber's disastrous Formula One season has continued after he finished fourth in the Canadian Grand Prix over the weekend due to a collision with the last place, Guido Vandegaard. Webber was almost a certain podium finisher, sitting in third position and pushing second place, Lewis Hamilton, when Webber collided with Van Garden, who was ignoring the blue flag, signaling, signaling for him to let Webber pass. Now, there's a rule, if you're flying around... Uh, in the Formula 1 cars and someone is in front of you, is in last place and you're above them. So if you're sitting first, second or third, whatever, and you're overlapping the last place and you support the last place, is supposed to let the first and second blokes through. And so Van Gaard didn't do that and that was what the problem was. And this in, involved ended up in a crush web, which was unfortunate. So the incident earned the Dutchman Van Garden a 10-second stop-go penalty, but this was no consolation for Weber, who ended up finishing fourth, as I said. So the results, so Sebastian Vettel and Vettel continued his good form, finishing first. Fernando Alonso from Ferrari finished second, and Lewis Hamilton finished third. So this takes Vettel out to even further in the lead in the overall standings. So he now has 132 points. Fernando Alonso sits in second with 96 Kimi Raikkonen in third with 88, and Weber sits back in fifth on 69 points, so he's got a bit of catching up to do. And moving on to the NBA, the San Antonio Spurs defeated Miami Heat 113-77 to in Game 3 of their Grand Final Conference, so the San Antonio Spurs now lead the Heat 2-1 in the Best of Seven series. Moving on a little bit closer to home now in the SNFL, West Adelaide are through to the semi-finals of the Foxtel Cup after a 53-point thumping of Port Melbourne at the MCG on Tuesday night. West will now play the winner of next week's game between Claremont and Southport on July the 16th, which is where the game is most likely to be held here at Amy Stadium. So West Adelaide kicked 12 goals to four in the second half to eventually run out winners 17-9-111 to Port Melbourne 9-4-58. Now, another SNFL results here over the weekend. We had West Adelaide 10 goals 7 67 defeated by Norwood 15 goals 7 97 at City Mazda Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Then on Sunday, we had Port Adelaide 19 11 125 defeating South Adelaide 9 goals 8 62 at Alberton Oval. We had Woodville West Torrens 10 goals 7 67 defeated by Sturt 16 goals 7 103 at Woodville Oval. And on Monday, we had Glenelg, 9 goals, 13, 67, defeated by North Adelaide, 18 goals, 17, 125. So it's very inaccurate kicking there by North Adelaide, so it could have been a bit more of a blowout, uh, fortunately for Glenelg. Okay, so moving on to AFL now. Round 11's results. So this was the first round, the first of the bye round. So we had Brisbane, Fremantle, Hawthorne, Port Adelaide, Richmond and the Western Bulldogs all having a bye. It's having a well-deserved rest halfway through the season. So for round 11, 12 and 13, there'll be a, a, each team will get a bye at some stage over those three weeks to have a rest and recharge the batteries and get themselves set for the run home towards the finals. So while those teams had a break, on Friday night, Essendon took on Carlton at the MCG. Essendon prevailing 11-11-77 to Carlton 10-12-72 in a very tight game. So Carl Essendon were down for most of the game and managed to come back in the last quarter and eventually get over Carlton by five points in a very tight game there. So Essendon's in some good form at the moment, currently sitting in fourth position, I believe. So they're looking, looking the goods at the moment. Now, Saturday afternoon saw GWS take on Geelong. GWS put up a good fight for three quarters, but unfortunately Geelong were just able to run, were just too good and were able to run over the top of them in the last quarter. So in the end, GWS 15-8-98 were defeated by Geelong 24-13-157 down there at Skoda Stadium. So GWS are looking like they're improving each week, so only 50-odd points this week. 
to Ge- to the top of the table, Geelong. So they're they're making some improvements, which is good to see. Uh, Adelaide unfortunately went down to Sydney by seventy seven points here at Amy Stadium on Saturday afternoon. So Adelaide six goals fourteen fifty were defeated by Sydney nineteen goals thirteen hundred twenty seven. So in a bit of a wake up call for Adelaide, they didn't play anywhere near their best footy, but in all credit to Sydney, they played some really good footy, played a really good game, and that's probably the best game of footy I've seen any team play for a while, and, and there's a lot of commentators that have agreed with that, and I think, I reckon, I'm, I'm going to tip it now, I reckon Sydney will, will win back-to-back premierships, so I reckon with the, with, the ta- with the draw permitting, I reckon it'll be a Sydney-Geelong grand final, and I think Sydney... Geelong will get close. They, like Geelong have beaten Sydney at the SCG already once this year, but I think Sydney, after their performance on Saturday, are looking like a really good team. And so, yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Now, an upset game. Gold Coast defeated North Melbourne up at Metricon Stadium on Saturday night. Nine goals, twelve sixty-six to eight goals, three fifty-one. So it was in very heavy rain. The Gold Coast managed to come from five goals down. Sorry, now yeah, managed to come from come from behind to eventually run run away fifteen point winners. So a big win for Gold Coast there, and disappointing for North Melbourne fans and North North Melbourne's finals aspirations are looking more and more, uh, becoming more and more distant as each week goes by. Uh, Sunday saw St Kilda take on West Coast at Etihad Stadium. St Kilda eleven goals fourteen eventually went down to West Coast 12 goals 12 84 again another very tight game uh, West Coast coming again coming from behind against St Kilda St Kilda kicked the first four goals and West Coast managed to fight their way back in a couple of interesting umpiring decisions not saying that decided the game but there was a couple of interesting umpiring decisions in the last quarter that gave West Coast a couple of goals and a couple of costly St Kilda misses, Lee Montagna running into an open goal with two of his teammates running into an open goal square. He could have passed it off to, he missed a goal, and Bo Maester missed a set shot from about 30 metres out that he probably should have kicked. So St Kilda would be kicking themselves there, they went down. and um, so. But West Coast now move into the eight, which is good news for them after... A lot of people at the start of the year picked them as grand finalists, so they uh, move into the eight for uh, so well deserved. And moving on to Monday's game between Melbourne and Collingwood, the Queen's Birthday Clash, which takes place every year. So Melbourne at five nine thirty nine were defeated by Collingwood seventeen twenty one hundred and twenty two at the MCG. So Collingwood could have won by a lot more than they did. If they had a kick straight, Travis Cloak had the yips again, and well, so did most people really. But Collingwood eventually running out eighty-eight point winners, and Melbourne's horrid year continues. So it'll be good that Melbourne have got the buy this week, so they can have a rest and get their act together, and hopefully grab themselves a couple of wins on the on the run home in the second half of the year. And congratulations in order for Tom Mitchell from Sydney, who was named the Round Eleven NAB Rising Star nominee for his performance against the Crows on Saturday. Mitchell, who was a father-son pick for Sydney two drafts ago, had 31 disposals, 10 tackles, 5 marks and kicked one goal too. So congratulations to him. Now moving on to round 12. This week we have Geelong, Melbourne, Kangaroos, St Kilda, Sydney and West Coast all have the bye this week. And on Friday night we have Carlton versus Hawthorne at Etihad Stadium. Uh, I think Hawthorne will make it 10 in a row for them and will put themselves equal top with Geelong again. Saturday afternoon we have Richmond versus Adelaide at the MCG, which will be a very tight game. Adelaide will be out to respond after their thumping at home against Sydney on the weekend. We're we'll looking for to turn around their form and hopefully get a win over there. But Richmond, if they can play anywhere near like they did against West Coast up in Pattinson Stadium before their buy, I reckon there'll be a good chance to win there. So that'll be a tight game. Uh, Fremantle and Brisbane at Pattinson Stadium on Saturday afternoon I think Fremantle will win that quite comfortably Brisbane, it's some black will break their games record beating, uh, Taking over Marcus Ashcroft as their leading games holder So congratulations to him But I think Fremantle will uh, produce the goods there uh, Essendon take on the Gold Coast at Etihad Stadium on Saturday night That'll be a lot closer than people think 
I think Gold Coast are in some good form at the moment, obviously after defeating the Kangaroos last weekend and and giving Hawthorne a run for their money a couple of weeks ago. I think they'll push Essendon, I reckon, but I think Essendon will just get up there, Eddie had on Saturday night. On Sunday, then we have GWS and Port Adelaide at Skoda Stadium. So last year, this was the game that cost Matty Primus his job when GWS defeated the power up there, but I think... Port Adelaide de- desperately need a win after having five losses on the trot. I think the buy will, will freshen them up, and GWS will give them a good run after, obviously, a good game against Geelong last week. I think Port Adelaide will just get up there. I reckon it'll be close. And the last game for round 12 this week will be Collingwood and the Bulldogs at Etihad Stadium, a twilight game, and I think Collingwood will get up there quite comfortably. Okay, so that's all we have for this week's edition of Mad Mondays with Patrick and Celeste. So you can listen to us on Oz Sports Online or you can check us out on Facebook or Twitter at Mad Mondays 13. We're having a break from, as we said, having a break from between the posts at the moment. So we'll keep you posted on what's happening with that. Okay, thanks for listening and I will talk to you all next week.